In this video we'll be taking apart the Motorola Razer Ultra 2025, also known as the Razer 60 Ultra in international markets. Now this specific phone belongs to a friend of mine, so I gotta be extra careful not to damage it when I'm taking it apart. Also if you're interested in seeing an in-depth review of the device itself, aside from the teardown, you'll be able to check that out on his channel Is It Worth It? And I'll place a link for it on this video. So to start off, we'll remove the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we do see a black rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the screen as well as the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry them off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the vegan leather backplate. Eight Phillips screws now need to be removed. We'll start off by disconnecting the main battery cable, followed by the rest of the cables. The lock or latch for this connector needs to be lifted up to release it in order to pull out the flex cable. This is the wireless charging coil. On the back side, there's graphite film to help transfer heat. There is no pull tab or pull pouch to help you pry the battery off, so you will need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. This is the 3520 milliamp hour battery. This flex cable has to be carefully peeled off from the subboard and the cable for the speaker has to be disconnected. Looking at the subboard, we see the primary microphone located over here underneath the covered shield, as well as the charger port with a red rubber gasket around it. The simulator is located on the other side. If you needed to replace the folding screen, you'd basically have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom cover and the cover itself, you'd disconnect the battery cable and the flex cables from the subboard, and then you'd remove the subboard, giving you access to the flex cable for the screen, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is, pry off the plastic border, and then pry off the folding screen from the frame. Keep in mind on these folding phones, it is much easier and cleaner to replace the entire flip assembly versus just replacing the folding screen itself, because you're gonna run into issues both with the adhesive around the plastic border, as well as the fact that you're gonna to have to use the original adhesive that's made for the folding screen and would have to properly apply it to make sure the screen is perfectly in place and doesn't move around at all, because if you fold it and the screen even moves slightly, it's going to crack or damage the screen, causing you extra expense.
Here's a look at the bottom speaker. The haptic feedback or vibrator motor is located on the bottom assembly, which is held on with some adhesive, so if you need to replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. Once the screen has been pried off from the frame, it can be carefully lifted over, but be careful since the flex cable is still attached to the main board. There are two Phillips screws which need to be removed that are holding on the cover over the flex cable connector for the screen. Looking at the outside screen, we see copper and graphite film behind the screen to help transfer heat. Nine additional Phillips screws need to be removed. The LED flash is located on this cover. Looking at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel main and the 50 megapixel ultra wide lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There are two additional microphones on the main board, one located here and the other one located here. The rear ambient light sensor is located here and there's copper tape and graphite film to help transfer heat. Looking at the other side, we have a better look at the 50 megapixel front facing camera, the proximity and ambient light sensor for the front, copper film behind the cameras to help transfer heat, as well as graphite film and thermal paste over the back shields. There is also a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we see a copper plate, which is seated over the RAM, which is seated over the processor. Here's a better look. To remove the top or secondary battery, we'll need to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. And this is the 1180 milliamp hour battery. Keep in mind this is the secondary battery, which is in addition to the primary one we pried off earlier. The top earpiece speaker is located here, which is held on with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. When it comes to replacing either the buttons or the fingerprint scanner, there are cure in place gaskets, which are holding the flex cables inside the frame, as well as sealing out any water or debris from getting in. So you would need to use a razor blade or an exacto knife to gently cut those out in order to replace either of those. There is also cure in place seals over the Phillips screw which are holding the top and bottom flip to the hinge assembly in the center. So if you were planning on separating the flips or disassembling the flip assembly, you'd have to peel off the cure in place seals over the Phillips screws and then you'd be able to remove those Phillips screws. Now when it comes to this phone, if you were to accidentally insert your SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry, since the filters for the microphones, as well as the microphones themselves are seated above the holes, 
so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.